Thank you, Urgenet, for having me. Uh, Urgenet was actually Cox Communications or Cox Enterprises was actually Urgenet's first customer uh, back in 2010 when they started off. So it's exciting to see where you guys have come over the nine years. Um, I'm, again, Imran Lakhani. I am part of the strategy and new growth group at Cox Communications. Uh, what our group does is look for adjacent growth opportunities that are outside of our core, which is voice video data. Um, excited to be here and share our perspective on home energy management. So for those who don't know who Cox is, Cox Enterprises is a $20 billion company here in Atlanta. We operate in three different divisions. Uh, Cox Communications, which is our cable operations. It's the third largest US cable company, uh, serving about 6 million customers. Cox Media Group, which owns TV stations, radio stations, and newspapers. Uh, we own the Atlanta Journal-Constitution here in town. We actually have 95.5 on the radio. We have CBS, but we're, we're selling the TV stations. Uh, it's public, so you guys probably have already seen the news. Um, and then Cox Auto, the little company that is actually really big. Um, so Cox Auto, we have auto trader Kelly Blue Book, but the gem is Mannheim Auto Auctions, which a lot of people don't really understand. It's, it processes 7 million cars a year, and at any given time on our 80 lots, there are 500 to 600,000 cars from dealers looking to be auctioned off. So it's a huge company. It's, it's definitely the biggest part of Cox Auto. Cox Communication Solutions, very easy, it's a cable company, right? So we do voice video data. Uh, our data, we have gigabit speeds at almost in every major market. Uh, the biggest change in the past couple of years has been our Home Life brand, which was actually born out of new growth, our group. Uh, what it offers is security and automation. Automation has been large and fast growing in the past couple of years uh, due to the smart home. Our footprint is geographically diverse. We pass about 10% of the US. We have about 6 million customers, as I said before. Uh, our biggest major markets are Phoenix, Vegas. It's fun to visit Vegas. Phoenix, Vegas, San Diego. Uh, we have New Orleans, New Orleans uh, Cleveland, and Hampton Roads. So pretty diverse. We can trial out uh, different products in different markets and have a good sense of where uh, product fits are. Now, as I mentioned, we're part of new growth. And so what we do is a thematic approach to figuring out what our next growth opportunity is within Cox Communications. And so what we do is evaluate major diverse industries, healthcare, energy, auto, whatever it may be that's driving change in our markets. And we look to do a deep dive and understand sort of the market trends, understand the sizing, understand the customer a little bit more and how we can impact what's our right to win. And so for connected resources, we're looking into home energy management as a solution for our customers who already have our smart home devices in their home. And so um, this might be a refresher for some, but if it's not, I'd love to share with you just our journey on how we thought about getting to a home energy management solution or looking into it. Um, the usage in the home follows a very peak or very um, inclined until 6 p.m. or so when most people come home, turn on everything in their home, right? You start cooking, you start watching TV, you start use, using your laptops, and until about 10, it doesn't really taper off. The problem is utilities have a hard time matching this load. And what happens is they have to go to these things called peaker power plants, which are basically very expensive for them to run. They can't really produce at that peak the whole day because they're just wasting electricity because it has to be used when consumed. So they have a big problem with this utility or with this demand curve. The other side of that is there's only three real devices that make up about 70% of your usage. It's your HVAC system, your water heater, and your fridge. HVAC systems being uh, attacked by the smart thermostat in the marketplace. Water heater, no one's really touching. And then the fridge, no one's really touching either, but smart plugs allow you to enhance the profile or save electricity. The average home uses about 30 kilowatt hours of electricity. No one knows what that is, but uses about 30 kilowatts, right? 
Um, and then in the south, that's a little bit more because of more use of the air conditioning. For residential energy cost, how many of you know what you pay per kilowatt? One, two, all right, five people, kilowatt hours. Sorry. <laughs> About 10, 20% maybe. Um, well, a lot of people know what their energy bill is, but they don't know how much they use in their home. So as long as that price or that amount doesn't fluctuate more than 10%, people are on auto pay, good. Right? They're, not, they're not really focused on it. But costs actually vary by state due to a lot of factors. Regulation, how old the power plants are in that state or near that state. If it's a wholesale market, which is deregulated, can they buy power from other markets? And it's the type of fuel they're using. Some are still on coal, some are going to nuclear, some are natural gas. And in the Midwest, it's, it's funny because wind is... 30% of the renewable source of electricity. Uh, the, middle, uh, the Midwest is actually known as the Middle East of wind. Um, and all of these guys are using wind as a renewable source. But as you can tell, it varies. And you saw the demand curve earlier. Utilities are getting smarter. Now they're offering time of use pricing. So basically, at this peak time, you're gonna pay double or triple the amount you used to pay because utilities know that they have to go to more expensive fuel sources to match that peak. So prices have been slowly increasing without the customers really feeling it. And it's gonna to continue to increase because of this shift to time of use pricing. Because customers are gonna get smart, consumers are gonna get smarter. They're gonna realize that their average bill today is 125, but in five years it may be much higher because they haven't shifted their usage based on time of use. Now, home energy management, how big is the market? It's large. It's about five and a half billion dollars. A lot of that is made up of hardware and service sales. So hardware being any smart devices that are in the home, smart energy devices that are in the home, services being anything that attaches to those hardware devices. And then it's growing at about six, six and a half percent to about $8 billion in 2023. There's a lot of room to grow because smart thermostat penetration is actually very low. How many of y'all have a Nest or an Ecobee or a Zen in your home? A lot more than traditional. 13% in the US is the adoption rate for smart thermostats. And the early majority hasn't even reached it yet. So it's been tech adopters or well-off families that have implemented this in their homes. It's fragmented, guys. A lot of startups, a lot of logos, a lot of people trying to do different things. The large companies or the big tech companies are very siloed, right? So Honey, Honeywell, for instance, has thermostats. They don't do much outside of that. Train has your HVAC service. They don't do out anything outside of that. They're all looking at it. They're definitely looking at it, but they don't really explore other areas just yet, right? Bigger tech companies, Google, Amazon, all of those guys are starting to acquire different companies, and they're looking into a holistic approach. There's M&A activity going on. In the past 24 months, it's been heightened by Amazon's binge into the smart home. And as you can see, Security seems to be the way most of these bigger companies are entering the home. Security is very personal to an individual or a home. It earns the customer's trust because they are, it is top of mind at all times for a customer. And so if you enter through security, you're able to offer additional products or services because you already have the customer's top of mind. Um, so one, one, two major transactions, so Google buying Nest for $3.2 billion in 2014 hasn't panned out as well as you would hope, or Google would have thought, right? Because they haven't really brought out a new product, right? They still have the thermostat, they're upgrading it slowly. They brought out a drop cam, which actually Google already had something in the development uh, for security. So Nest hasn't really brought out the products and they have no real renew, 
uh, recurring revenue, it's all hardware sales. So they're trying to figure out how do they can enhance their profile with re recurring revenue. Amazon just invested last year in uh, Ecobee. They invested $61 million in their next round. So Amazon is looking into smart energy as a service as well. Now, smart energy devices, smart devices in general, have a real issue. They're disparate. There's no centralized platform for connecting all of these smart devices in your home. If you think about it, voice is a fake interoperable mechanism, right? Because nothing in the back end is actually talking to each other. They're just allowing you to perform actions and nothing is actually connecting the dots in the back end. Uh, there's no action. A lot of the platforms just show data, right? So look at Sense, this company uh, that shows utility or disaggregated data. Right now, all they do is show data and consumers don't really know what to do with it. Uh, they know that they're using X amount on their AC. I, I don't know what to do with that information is most of, that, most, of the, most of the comments. They're cost prohibitive. If you look at devices, they're expensive. They're about $200 a pop, right? And some homes have two, even three zones, so you gotta get two or three thermostats just to cover your entire home. Um, they're not cheap for the average consumer. They're hard to decipher. So because you don't know what kilowatt hours means, you're not really gonna know when you see a graph telling you kilowatt hours. Um, and then most solutions are not personalized. So you buy it, you buy it out of the box, you install it, it's gonna work. You can, you can have some learning attached to it, but it's not really personalizing it. It's basing it on whatever they've learned from all of their customers. Um, the other thing is it's React. So it doesn't do maintenance that well. There's a Nest is starting to do that. They're starting to give you clues on, hey, your HVAC is performing poorly or it's not performing as well as intentioned. But they just started doing that. But a lot of the other devices, they're, they're not really telling you about maintenance, maintenance issues. And then you're in a bubble. So Opower started this in 2013 or 2014, telling you what your neighbors use. And it really affected your use because you wanted to beat your neighbors at all times. Um, but they haven't really gone any further than that. They haven't told you, hey, you can optimize it. They, your, your neighbor's optimizing it this way. You should think about it this way as well. So we're seeking to provide a unified experience, right? So all of those negatives, we're trying to pull back and see what we can make into a positive. We're trying to make an interoperable system where you can bring in a Zen, you can bring in an Ecobee, you can bring in a Nest, you can bring in any smart plug manufacturer you have, lighting, and it's interoperable. Everything is talking on the back end. So with that, there's a strong payback because everything, it's, it's, it's adapted to you. You can basically set a budget and tell it, hey, I wanna save X amount today or X amount this month, and the system works on the back end talking to each other and adjust the thermostat or adjust your fridge uh, frequency or adjust your water heater appropriately. Um, it's, this is where Urgenet is a big help it's a transparency inter utility bill, right? So understanding usage and patterns and understanding interval data from your meter and interval data allows us to do maintenance, uh, be proactive in maintenance. So you know that, hey, my fridge is on the fritz or my uh, HVAC needs repair. And um, you can get to a customer service agent or whoever fixes your HVAC system, um, get it fixed. So here's the savings for potential savings. If you just tell customers how much they're, what, what they're using after the fact, you're looking at about a four to 5% savings. But if you tell them real time, they're actually gonna save 10% because they're gonna adjust their behavior if you keep showing them that real time information. However, if you could do real-time information and also do a smart program design where you're actually optimizing and adjusting uh, their energy usage or energy devices in their home, 
you're able to save them 20 to 35 percent on their um, electricity bills. So if you are able to shave five kilowatt hours off that 30 kilowatt hour bill or daily usage, that's about a dollar a day. It may not seem like much, but it actually adds up to $30 a month, right? And $360 a year that you're putting back in their pocket. Um, as for the presentation, that's all I had. So happy to take questions. I know I ran through that pretty quickly. Yeah, it, it, it all depends on product and when smart features enter that realm, right? Yeah, you're gonna use your, you're gonna cook and your vent hood's gonna turn on, but you're all, you're, you've been cooking before, have you not? So like the vent hood has always been on at that particular kilowatt usage. So it may not save the kilowatts just because cooking is your natural passion, but you can adjust other things maybe. I, I, I don't know the full extent of where the savings might adjust. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the beauty of, I, and I've, I totally skimmed over why our right to win, right? So um, the beauty of our product is we have uh, home life already out there. Home life services are our automation play, and that is smart devices already in the home. Um, and so home life has about, I don't know, 500,000 customers out in the market but there's also six million customers that we have that could be told that this exists, right? So we have a big marketing engine that already can explain to customers what it is, right? Whenever they renew their contract or whenever they come into the store, solution stores, or whenever they call in for discounts on their cable bill, they can be offered other services, right? And so there's, programmatically, we can get to the customer, right? It's, it's the idea that they need to understand that there's value to them, because that's been the gaining issue for the whole industry. I think if you can exp if you can get them to even trial it, because we have the ability to trial it in our markets or give the equipment away for free, let them trial it. And we, the biggest driver for us is we also have installers, right? We have field services in our markets that can do the installation, whereas the Google, the Nest of the world, the Amazon, they contract out. And we already have our in-house field services. So allowing customers to even trial it in their home and allowing them to see the savings for themselves is beneficial for us. But is it only geared for home life? It would be for now. Yeah. Because they already have the automation hub. They already have the, the means to get the smart devices. Yes. Yeah, so Urgenet actually has utility tariff data, which is amazing. And so what they do is show you what um, tariff you're on for the utility. And they also have a list of all of the tariffs that are in that utility's um, plan. And so some utilities allow you to switch between tariffs pretty easily. Some have 12 month kind of hold periods. Um, and so if you're able to adjust uh, pretty quickly or month to month based on your usage, that can help you save a lot of uh, heartache. And then if you can get on a time of use pricing and also pre-cool your home or preheat your home or whatever it is that you can optimize, that can help you lower your rates as well.
so we're growing our list of compatible devices, but if you have a smart thermostat already, we're not gonna make you purchase another one. It doesn't make any sense. Um, so you can use the one you have, and if there's an API that's already exposed for us, we're gonna use that, and then we're gonna store the data per whoever that thermostat manufacturer or the smart plug manufacturer's terms of service is. But the good thing is with the interval data from Urgenet or the uh, interval data from a smart meter that you can access, you kind of can get a pattern of when that usage is for a device. So you don't actually need the data from the manufacturer. Yeah, so we're, uh, this is the strategy piece, which is nice. So we're, uh, we're still exploring the appropriate avenues. Uh, we're going through our consumer insights team internally. Uh, we're gonna do a lot of digging with our partners to understand exactly um, how we can leverage each other. And then um, we're hoping to have a trial at some point, end of this year, early next year. Yeah. That's probably me just not coloring correctly. I didn't stay inside the lines. Yeah, so the super off peak um, in Arizona, it's actually, at some point they pay you to take electricity. It's like negative one cent. So they actually pay you to use uh, electricity at their home because they have too much solar installation. Um, and California also sends them power. And so, yeah, there, there's a way where you can tie in sol storage um, in, in home to arbitrage for that. Um, we're exploring that avenue. I can't say that we're using it uh, yet, but there's definitely that exploration where you should be able to use that super off peak load, fill up your battery as much as you can, use it in your home and save the 30 cents per kilowatt hour. That's peak time rate, right? And so we are looking at that as a, as a way. Yeah. So from our look into privacy, customer owns the data for their home, for their electricity use. So the meters themselves, the customer can actually request interval data and they have access to it and it's theirs, right? And so we're as a proxy, just like Urgenet, we're a proxy for the customer. The customer owns the data. At the end of the day, if they cancel, it's all wiped. Um, as for the manufacturer, that's Google's privacy. I, I mean, the customer owns the data is what Google will say, but at some point, Google owns the data. So I, I don't know as, from the manufacturer perspective. They would be for, for, for the time being. There's opportunity to obviously white label uh, for other MSOs or utilities that are outside our footprint. It's a very low margin business. So <laughs> cursory, cursory look, no, but I, I, can't, I can't say no if we can build a VPP or virtual power plant right out of it. So I don't know.
Yeah, the beauty of interval data every five minutes is you can see granular data without actually using any data from a manufacturer. So if you don't have access to manufacturer data, it's okay. But we work with manufacturers, like work with Nest, work with whoever, right, to get that data as well. Yeah? What are you most excited about with this? And then what do you think is going to be one of your biggest headaches or challenges? Biggest, uh, I'll start with the headaches. Um, consumer adoption. I think the biggest is what can you charge consumers that makes them happy to pay, but also see the payback, right? Because after a year of using this product, their bill is always going to be constant because you can't really optimize more and more and more, right? So if they see a bill from the year before and they see this, this month's bill, it's the same. Hey, you told me you'd save me 10% or 15%. What happened? Turn it off and see what happens, right? Like that's the, that's the notion. Um, what am I most excited about? I think... There's legs here. There's a lot of legs, right? Everyone's trying to get something in the space. The good thing is we have geographic uh, or city density, which means that we have 70%, 80%, um, in some areas, 80% um, concentration in a market. So people need cable, and unfortunately, sometimes you're the only player in the game, um, cable being data. Uh, video is kind of dying, but uh, data, everyone wants broadband in their home, and I think we have direct line of sight in that. Yeah, I think, uh, again, it's the VPP model, and it's trying to figure out if, because we have that density in a city, um, how we can use that to the advantage of utilities to kind of shave off that peak load a little bit. And if consumers are willing to adjust their savings or adjust their, uh, sorry, adjust their load with some incentives or savings. Oh. Yes. Yeah, so the, the, the way the messaging works is you could tell abnormal patterns from the uh, usage or from the electrical signature. And so when there is abnormal patterns beginning to appear, you give them a few days to kind of work themselves out on the back end. If it doesn't, you message that, hey, there may be something wrong, right? You're not going to say there is something wrong. There may be something wrong with this device. Um, it might make sense to go get it checked out. Um, Yeah, yeah, I think, I think there is a huge value, right, to that, because uh, if you can repair something for $60 that can cost you $2,000 down the line, there's a lot of impact to a consumer financially. Um, messaging, I'm not, a, I'm not a big marketer, so I, I don't know how the messaging would work, but I'm sure the smart folks at Cox Communications will figure it out. Yeah. Uh, the prototype we've developed, uh, it's, it's, it's about getting internal approvals, making sure that the market is sound. So again, uh, probably beginning of next year. Yeah. So, so gas would naturally kind of fit in with a thermostat um, because you're using less heat. Um, in the winter time, um, through this mechanism, if you have gas and heat at home, um, water is an interesting piece because water, it's it's sort of based on a flow, and you, I think only two percent of the U.S. has smart water meters installed um, because cities just aren't. Water is owned by cities, so it's municipality owned. 
And so there's not enough incentive right now for them to upgrade their systems on the water meter side just because it costs them a lot and they have other initiatives that they're trying to roll out. But I think in the, in, in the sh medium to long term, you'll see it, this kind of being involved in water as well. Thank you.